and welcome to uh, lecture 20 of the course computational complexity uh, this lecture is going to be short but interesting so we are uh, in the last lecture we saw what is p space completeness right p space completeness is a notion of completeness for the class p space uh, so a language is p space complete if it is in p space and all the languages in p space a all the languages a in p space are reducible to that language in polynomial time right so today we are going to see how certain uh, languages based on games are uh, are p space complete okay so in the uh, previous lecture we saw that the the, the language tqbf true quantified fully quantified boolean formula is uh, p space complete so the first uh, language that we consider in this lecture is uh, what is called formula game and it is very uh, closely relate, related to tqbf okay so what is a formula game uh, it is that uh, there are two players um, let's call them alice and bob or player one and player two and they are given a boolean formula with many variables and they take turns so the variables are x1 x2 and so on they are, they are labeled and they take turns trying to assign uh, assign the uh, the true and false va uh, uh, values true and false values to the variables and uh, of course it won't be a game unless they have uh, conflicting objectives right so the player 1 wants to make the formula true and player 2 wants to make the formula false so just to be more formal so it is a form it's a game like this so phi is a, a quantified boolean formula like this uh, there exists x1 says that for all x2 there exists x3 something some, something psi and where psi is an unquantified boolean formula okay so they are both trying to assign values to x boolean values to x1 x2 x3 etc such that player 1 is trying to make psi true by setting the values player 2 is trying to set psi to be false okay so player 1 wants to make it true player 2 wants to make it false and they take turns assigning the variable values so let us try to see this one formula let's say uh, phi is this that x is x1 such that for all x2 such that x is x3 such that this is true let's see what happens in this case now let's say um, uh, let's say if, if let's say uh, player 1 sets x1 to false okay so now that means that the first now this is a cnf form right so this the first clause is already uh, has to be made true so player 2 can now player 2's ob objective is to make the entire formula false so the player 2 can immediately set x2 to be false and then the entire formula is false so player 1 should do something smarter player 1 should set x1 to true now once player 1 sets x1 to true right so again one just to just to recap what i said if player 1 sets x1 to false then player 2 can set F x2 to false and then the entire formula is false so that leads to a lose for x player 1 and win for player 2 now if player 1 sets x1 to true so the first clause is already true now what can player 2 do let's say player 2 sets x2 to true right so then this is the second clause is already true now and part of the third clause is false because x2 complement goes to false now but then player 1 gets to choose x3 and he can choose x3 to be false so that x3 complement is true so the entire formula gets evaluated to true right so player 2 if he sets uh, x2 to uh, true then that does not lead to a win for player 2 that leads to a win for player 1 instead if player 2 sets x2 to false second clause is now not true but third clause is set to true because x2 is false now all the player 1 has to do now player 1 again has control over x3 but he doesn't need to worry, worry about clause 3 he all has to do all that he has to do is to set clause 2 to true for that he can simply do that by setting clause x3 to be true so 
Now, so now it's very clear. So if x1 is set to true, then so player 1 has a winning strategy here. He sets x1 to true. Now, depending on what player 2 sets the value of x2 to be, he can choose x3 to be uh, the opposite of that. So if, he's, if player 2 sets x2 to false, then x3 is set to true. And if player 2 sets x2 to true, then he can, uh, player 3 can set x3 to false. So either way, there is a win for player 1. Okay, And there is a win for winning strategy for player 1 means player 1 can always win, which means there cannot be a winning strategy for player 2, right? If I can always win playing this game, then my opponent will, whatever he or she tries, cannot win the game, right? So, um, so now this is the game and maybe it, uh, it is, uh, so now you can see when, when x1, x2, x3 are kind of alternating between player 1 and player 2. Now this is exactly like for, uh, for uh, TQBF, right? So we are just asking whether this fully quantified Boolean formula is true or not, right? So that is, so what is formula game? Formula game is a set of all, again, I have not formally defined it. Uh, formula game is a set of all Boolean formulas phi where player one has a winning strategy, right? Player one has a winning strategy. Right, and player one has a winning strategy when this fully quantified Boolean formula is in TQBF, right? Because this fully quantified thing has to be true for player one to have a winning strategy. So uh, that's so that's why the formula game is also so it's essentially equivalent to TQBF. So this is also p-space complete. Right? It's a, a, a essentially the same game, but just being kind of interpreted as a uh, TQBF was a something about Boolean formula, but this is just more interpreted more as a game than Boolean formulas, right? So maybe just to give a bit more insight, let us try to see this uh, like game tree, right? So initially x1 is going to be set, right? So it could be set to 0 or 1 or true or false. And then x2 can be set to true or a 0 or 1. Then x3 can be set to 0 or 1. Right. And now we are at different places. So if x1 and x2 are both false, then I think, as we discussed initially, both these lead to false. False meaning player one is losing, right? Player one's goal is to uh, make it the, make the formula true. If x1 is false, but x2 is true, again, this is something that we didn't explore. Uh, x2 is true, then uh, now again, there is a winning, um, it depends on what x3 is. If x3 is 0 or false, then the formula is correct, is set to true, otherwise it's false. And if x1 is true, then uh, player, uh, now x3 is set to just opposite of x2. So this is false, this is true, and this is false, and this is true. So now, uh, sorry, it's the opposite is a win for player 1. So now you can see this game tree and see what is happening, right? So there is another way to explain the whole thing again. So player 1 wants to go to a place such that no matter what player 2 does, player 1 has a winning strategy. So let us see. So if player 1 had taken this path, this, this path, uh, x, setting x1 equal to 0, then player 2 could lead player 1 to x2 set by setting x2 to 0 to this point. Now, no matter what player 1 does, it leads to false. It leads to a lose for a player 1, right? So, it is like this. Uh, you could, you could for these uh, levels just above the leaf, now, now that we know that the last turn is uh, by player, uh, player 1, you could see what so if player 1 gets it in this node, right, this node over here, it is a false, right, meaning whatever player 1 does, he cannot win. 
but if he gets it here it is a it's a true maybe i'll use another color so this is false and this is true because from this there is one path and here also true and here also true from these points there, are, there is one path but look at this now look at the at player 2's uh, turn at x2 now maybe i'll use another color green now over here it's a win for player 2 because he can guide player 1 to the false place so this is also a win for player 2 which is false in our terminology right so false true is absolute win for player 2 win for player 1 is relative to player 1 player 2 but this this uh, the 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 left sub the right subtree sorry it is a loose it is a win for player 1 because no matter what player 2 chooses here it leads to a win for player 1 right and at the top it's a win for player 1 because now player 1 gets to choose so now there is a false and true he can always go to the true so now this is how you evaluate a game tree so at the at the place where player 1 has to decide he just needs one path of a victory at the place where player 2 has to decide player 1 if player 1 is to win all the paths lead uh, all the paths should lead to victory for player 1 right so so that happens in this tree so this is a victory for player 1 is there a way to modify this uh, so that you can think about it right uh, so this is how you view games as trees again these are simple games which you can uh, compute and uh, this is the formula game and just one more point one more final point here we had players taking turns x1 x2 x3 and so on but it need not be turns like that so player one could have one or maybe two variables maybe three variables two variables player one plays followed by three variables played by player two player followed by x6 by player one and so on it could be like that also you could get a corresponding tree there also but then more choices will be made by one player uh, so it will be a bit different but it is still the, the general principles of what I said just continues to hold. Okay, so this is how you view, you view games as trees. right? So formula game is another p-space complete game. Uh, another p-space complete game is what is called generalized geography. So what is geography? Uh, so geography uh, is kind of a very, uh, it's, it's kind of like Antakshari that uh, some of you might have played as, as kids. So the goal here is to, let's say player one says, or let's say two players, okay, you could have more players, but for simplicity, let's stick to two players. Let's say player one says the name of a place, right? So let's say Hyderabad. Now player 2 has to say the name of a place which starts with the last letter. So player 2 could say Dubai, let's say. Now player 1 has to say a name of a place that starts with I. So let's say player 1 says Istanbul. Now player 2 has to say something starting with L. Let's say Lucknow. Let's say player 1 one two one two player two has to start with w maybe washington right so on right so this is just, this how it is so after player one says hyderabad player two could have said say denmark for instance right and player one has to say something with k so he may say code code right so this kind of thing is, is what and uh, this this game continues till some player cannot say uh, it cannot name any place with the assigned letter right so this is the game generalized geography um, this is the game geography sorry this is not generalized the generalization hasn't happened yet but this is the game uh, but uh, what is generalization the generalization is that uh, now this is you can like I have drawn here you can view it as a graph right and player one moves 
makes a move, then player 2 makes a move and finally the person who cannot make a move loses. Right? So, the multi multiple ways to reach each place. So, uh, let us say from Dubai you could have said India which is another name of a place or Indonesia. right? From Indonesia you could have said Afghanistan. right? So, from Afghanistan you could have said New York for instance. right? So, from New York again maybe again you could have said Koji code or Calcutta or whatever, right? So on. So, again there are different ways to reach the same place. So, the generalized version of this game is to is where you have again this is also there in uh, Sipser again where you have uh, some a graph okay, one I'm, I'm just reproducing the same example in Sipser. Okay, so player one starts with one and it is his turn and he could, I will just draw the arrows and then talk. Right. So, now let us say player 1 starts from 1. Right. So, now in this graph the goal is to move leave a person without a move. So, player 1 can go to 3 and now player 2 can now there is only one move at from 3 there is only one outgoing arrow. So, he has to go to 5. Now, player 1 can now go to 6 and player 2 is stuck. Right. There is there is no outgoing, there is one outgoing arrow from 6, but that goes to a place that has already been visited, right. So, you, you again the name in the geography game, game, you cannot name a place that is already named, right. So, here 3 is already visited, so that is ruled out. So, player 1 wins because player 2 is left without a move, okay. So, this is an example of a graph where player 2 does not uh, player one has a winning strategy right so maybe i'll just uh, sorry write the for uh, defi define the game formally generalized geography is a graph g and a starting position b such that player one has a winning strategy starting from point B at or in the in the graph G right. So, this is the uh, definition of the game. So, as I said, if in this graph player 1 has a winning strategy, the goal is to identify who has a winning strategy, right. So, let us say, let us say we change the graph a bit and we reverse this edge, right. So, now it turns out that player 2 has a winning strategy. Uh, why? Because let us say player 1 plays to 3, right. Now, player 2 can lead 1 to 6 and there is no outgoing arrow from 6. So, player 1 is has lost. Okay. So, this is why player 1 cannot play 3 first. What if player 1 plays, sorry, player 1 plays to 2, right. Um, if uh, player 1 leads to 2 then player 2 can move to 4 right. Now, player 1 is again again he is not stuck but he has 2 choices. So, player 1 could move to 7 or 5. If he moves to 7 then player 2 can push him to 9 without any exit point. If he moves to 5 then sorry player 1 can push him to 6 without any exit point. So, this is a graph where 
no matter what player one does there is an ex there is a strategy for player two to uh, win the game so this is a this is not an instance of geog generalized geography or this is a no instance of generalized geography right whereas if this red edge was reversed as i had drawn initially that's a yes instance so again uh, in a, in games like this where the game is finite right so here it's a finite game there's a finite sequence of moves right it is a finite game where the win and lose are win and loss are absolute right so either a wins player one wins or player two wins right there are no draws in such games either play one player one of the two players must have a winning strategy it cannot be that because you can look at the game tree and do the analysis that i said earlier like the, the game tree over here or something like this right you could do the analysis that i said earlier and determine who has a winning strategy so in games like this one player has to have the winning strategy and if one has a winning strategy two cannot have the winning strategy and vice versa right and this game this this game of generalized geography also turns out to be np uh, sorry p space complete and the proof uh, is there in sipser i'm not i'm not repeating the proof here but it's it's kind of a long proof uh, generalized geography is p space complete proof is there in sipser you can take a look right and uh, so this is also another game that is p space complete so now let me just uh, talk about uh, games in general right so again like i said earlier um, why does it why does it why do all the games have to have a winning strategy all the finite games so suppose the game tree is like this okay so like like what i have drawn here um in this game who has a winning strategy this is a very simple game with just two moves player 1 makes a move followed by player 2 so player 1 where will he move uh, let's say the w's denote wins for player 1 and l's denote lose for loss for player 1 player 1 will take the middle path right this path because then whatever player 2 does whichever three uh, next directions player 2 does player 1 is going to win however if we change the uh, sorry if we change the graph slightly very slightly let's say uh, change this w to l now whatever player 1 does right sorry whatever player 1 does whether he goes for the first let's see he goes here then player 2 can push him down here let us say he goes to the middle path then player 2 can push him down to this down to this and if he goes player 1 goes here then player 2 can go anywhere let's say player 2 goes here so now in this case player 2 has a winning strategy but in the earlier case when this this l was not there instead it was w player 1 had a winning strategy so in general all the finite games where there are no draws one player has to have a winning strategy so so in that sense even games like chess right are 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 finite games okay even though chess has a possibility of draw they are finite games right because there are rules of chess that prevent the game to con that to continue infinite infinitely right so for instance if a position appears three times then it's a draw or if a position does not appear three times then something has to keep changing so maybe after a while you run out of pieces so then the positions will not repeat so the the game by but because of the rules is inherently finite so chess uh, you can analyze it in this manner maybe the anal analysis will be more complicated because uh, uh, because of the of the fact that um, the number of positions to analyze is humongous even for a computer as of today right so there is it's so complex that you cannot analyze that but in small games like tic tac toe right so you can certainly analyze and i think there are um, you could e easily find the strategy perfect strategy if both player 1 and player 2 plays tic tac toe then it will be a draw right so this is uh, so this is about chess as chess or any any finite games they will have a Uh, you can study it but then the point with chess is that it's, it's so complex right it's it's 
even for a computer it's so hard and then it's an, another altogether another thing for let's say there is a winning strategy for the white in chess now in an actual game in an actual championship when a person is sitting across the table and uh, across the table of another person and then you don't expect even if there is a winning strategy it could be so complex that somebody cannot remember all that right so that's why um, so 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 it's 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 one thing to show that it is uh, a win for white or win for black uh, but then it's another thing to execute it but anyway as of now even computers don't know whether it's a win for white win for black or draw okay i think checkers has been shown to be a win for uh, uh, sorry a draw i think the game checkers where it's simpler than chess so but still played on an eight, eight cross eight board so games in general uh, are piece space hard uh, okay uh, what do i mean by that like we said uh, generalized geography is piece space hard like a specific game if i give you a graph a specific graph it's you can decide but then in general this problem is piece space hard so what is generalized chess so as i said chess is a finite game 8 by 8 squares and fixed number of pieces etc but generalized chess is uh, generalized chess is let's say played on an n cross n board uh, and with maybe different rules for the pieces maybe more pieces etc right so the question is given some n cross n board with some specific pieces is it a win for a white or black right so this turns out to be p space hard uh, the reason is what we said earlier for all these uh, generalized geography formula game all that you could encode any given that you could encode the entire thing into a formula and then you are asking is there a move for player 1 such that whatever player 2 does such that there is a move for player 1 again such that whatever player 2 does etc etc such that it leads to a win right so this entire whatever is the n by n generalized chess board you can you can condense it into a boolean formula the the position can be captured into a boolean formula and then uh, this position now it, it just becomes kind of once you represent the win loss win losses it just becomes like a for, formula game kind of thing again i am just speaking in a very very high level uh, it it's, it sounds like i'm oversimplifying things but this is a high level idea and indeed it has been shown that generalized chess is piece space hard and as are generalized forms of many other games okay so many games are uh, piece space hard like many games when i say generalized games like not not fixed like tic tac toe is a tic tac toe is a finite game so obviously you know the rule you know that it is the perfect strategy leads to a draw and like like once you give a fixed graph it's one can determine but the problem is in general if i am given a giving you a graph or giving you a board the problem of analyzing who wins or who loses that is p space hard um yes so that's that's about what i wanted to say in this lecture so uh, just to summarize a uh, formula game is kind of identical to um, the tqbf and it is a p space complete generalized geography is a generalization of this geography game which is like antakshari uh, which is um, so generalized the generalized form of which is p space complete again i didn't show the proof but uh, you can read up the proof from sipser and in general i just talked a bit about uh, games and why for finite games one person have to ha has to have the winning strategy as long if there are no draws right and and i said that the generalized games where the, the generalization of a certain game like generalized chess um, it has to be uh, it has to be uh, p space hard so this is generalized chess is p space hard sorry for the bad handwriting or p space complete and yeah that that's all i wanted to say for this lecture uh, so i'll stop now thank you